Well, welcome back to uh, Facebook Live. You are at Porter's Gallery in Singapore and you're now looking at our beautiful neon sign that says sharing happiness with art. It's actually the mission of the gallery. And we're going to enter a room two. It's uh, about 60 centimeters high. It weighs uh, 15 kilos and actually it's a gift. A gift that I received uh, uh, almost 13 years ago from uh, friends who were visiting us in Singapore, from France, after a vacation in Cambodia. They explained that they bought a, at the museum shop in Phnom Penh, at the National Museum shop in Phnom Penh, the uh, big size uh, reproduction of a famous sculpture sculpture of uh, King Jayaraman VII. First thing they said arriving at home with this package that they carried in the plane, they asked if they could uh, put it on the floor, uh, which I said of course, uh, and immediately afterwards, uh, once they explained this was uh, my gift, I said, is it okay if I don't open it? And 13 years almost later, I have still not opened the gift, and I do not intend to. The, the reasons for not uh, opening the gift that uh, I gave them first, there was a reference to my time in Japan as a young uh, uh, banker where I had learned uh, to not open a gift in front of the person who uh, gives it to me. Uh, and the reason why is first you appreciate the gift, the fact that you're given something and you thank the person for bringing the gift. And that's why, in, in, uh, particularly in Japanese culture, the wrapping is so uh, important. So you might see, oh, it's from Chanel, and uh, really uh, uh, thank profusely for, for, for the gift. You'll open it later so that uh, you won't show uh, the giver your uh, reaction, that perhaps you don't like the color, or that's a book you already read, or you think that you know, it's for some reason inappropriate gift. So it gives you an opportunity actually to usually thank the person twice. First for giving you the gift and later once you open it for, uh, for, for what it is. I also referenced the Chinese uh, emperor. When you visited the Chinese emperor from anywhere in the world you had to bring a tribute because uh, the Chinese emperor was considered uh, the most powerful man on earth. Uh, and uh, sometimes even a divine incarnation, so you had to show uh, respect. Uh, however, beca precisely because he was considered a divine incarnation, he doesn't need anything, so the eunuchs would take your gift, still wrapped, and put it on display in the Forbidden City as a proof of the power, influence, wealth of the emperor. Uh, and I think when we when someone asks, you know, what, what do you want to say for your birthday, and you essentially say nothing, you are in that state of mind that we actually don't really need much. But still, uh, very often you'll be touched when you receive a gift. My third uh, reason for not opening it uh, was an experience I had uh, in my early 20s when I was uh, lucky enough to uh, walk and perhaps even enjoy a picnic on the Pont Neuf right by Cristo. Christo and Jean-Claude, uh, his late wife, are very prominent uh, artists who uh, 
wrap buildings and islands. Uh, this year, Christo is meant to wrap uh, the uh, Arc de Triomphe, the Arc of Triumph in Paris. In fact, there is a retrospective of Christo's work that uh, uh, was due to open on Monday uh, at the Pompidou Center. So, like anybody growing up in Paris, I knew that the Pont Neuf, which means the new bridge, is the oldest bridge in Paris. However, I was not exactly sure which it is until I experienced it wrapped, because I got to discover the shape of the lampposts, of the arches, of uh, these alcoves where people put uh, tables for a picnic. So I, I, I learned that wrapping can reveal. So what uh, you just saw is an original uh, work by Christo and Jean Claude. They actually finance their practice by selling uh, preparatory uh, uh, works such as this. I don't say drawing because there's drawing, but it's, it's multimedia. The, the, what you see here is cloth and a string. Uh, there's uh, you know a map of Paris. There's architectural uh, elevations because they finance the whole installations uh, themselves, they never take any subsidy. So as you can imagine, you need uh, kilometers of cloth and string, teams and teams of mountain climbers to install the, the, such, a, such an installation as the wrapping of the, of the pond. And then the other reason for not wrapping the gift is I thought, there is a, there's actually some beauty uh, to it uh, as it is. I, I also thought, you know, I'm, I'm a collector, what could I do with a replica? And not that I would know what to do with an original, because it means it's been looted from a, a co-art or something. Uh, I found it quite beautiful. So in fact, for about two years, the, the package was in our living room, and sometimes friends were asking, so what is it? Is it a work of art? And sometimes I would respond responding section to Jeff Koons. Um, and I know it's even more precious than that. So now the, the head uh, is called Homage to Christo Part 1 and the Christo uh, and Jean-Claude work is actually called uh, Homage to Christo Part 2, at least in my, uh, in, in, for, the, for this exhibition. Uh, so there's a few references because behind the frames Christo wrote uh, this is one work in two parts, do not separate. And he sketched how you're supposed to hang the, the two frames. So I'm now saying this is one work in two parts, do not uh, separate. And you can see the works talk to each other with the use of acrylic, with the, uh, the, the scotch tape that has the same color of the River Seine. And maybe uh, you want to notice also, it's also here mysteriously signed China with a name card, I will uh, explain this later. Perhaps I should introduce you to uh, Savita Apte. Uh, well, to all the people in the room. So first we are uh, very happy to have uh, Kim Berling with us, uh, the creator of uh, Priya Gita Diaz's exhibition. Uh, thank you for, for staying with, with, with us. We have Karine saint boin who is a perfumer uh, at Gibaudan. Well, you can see the exhibition, sadly you can smell it, but we will try and help you uh, experience that. Uh, and we also have here uh, Hervé Fratel, who is also from Gibaudan and a dear friend uh, of uh, Savita, who wants to help uh, make sure that we're, we're not having a, uh, it's not a, it's not a monologue, you're welcome to come. Come, come, come with me. because I came to speak to you about I don't know what. And then we started talking about your work and it developed into this idea of taking it further, your own explorations and, and really extrapolating them in a direction that you had started but not quite confidently enough. And so I think together we pushed you, Thank you. Um, to, to take this to another level of exploration. And I love the fact that you incorporated 
not only the head of Jayavarman, but a lot of the philosophies that Jayavarman followed. He started more than 102 hospitals in Cambodia, and you decided that half the proceeds of this exhibition would go to help those um, hospitals. So there was a sense not only of connecting to history, but also to the present. And uh, it became a living exhibition for the perfume, for the music. Um, it was a, it, it became more than just flat works on the wall. It was a tribute not only to Christo, but also to Jayavarman and to humanity, I think. So um, that's just an incredible thing to have done. Thank you, Savita. Indeed, it felt very uh, validating uh, when uh, yeah, we were just catching up, and I mentioned this, and when I saw you so taken that uh, I had not uh, yet Essay from the exhibition that's on the, on the catalog that, uh, uh, that's on the reporter's uh, website. But by the way, for people following us from room one, the catalog for uh, Priya's exhibition will be uh, online probably within a couple of days and includes a beautiful essay as well as a QA with, uh, by and uh, between Kimberly Shen and between Kimberly and, and, and Priya. So now back to the Secret Sacré and to what happened. Six months after receiving the gift, uh, I felt a little bit curious and guilty as well, because I thought perhaps my, my friends were upset that I had not opened the gift. So I did what one does in such circumstances. You take a 15 kilo baby to the hospital. And we, this is the first thing that happened. We we did a um, we did a CT scan, and what appeared is this uh, so this X-ray here, which um, which I expected to see in the sense that I was familiar with uh, the head of the Raman Seven, or I thought I was, uh, which was one of my reasons for saying I didn't really need to open it because I kind of knew what it is. But of course my familiarity with the sculpture was not that uh, great. So when we saw this x-ray, I first was uh, struck by its uh, beauty. In fact, uh, the king is praying. Uh, the, the head was found, uh, I think, at some point in the 20th century. The body of the sculpture was found uh, in the year 2000, and, uh, and uh, the, the, king, the king is praying. Jayavarman VII uh, is a king from the late 12th century to the early, uh, early 13th century. He brought Buddhism to uh, Cambodia, and as Savita mentioned, he is uh, very well known for his, uh, his compassion. In fact, he said, the suffering of the people is my suffering. So to, to put things in perspective, uh, at the same time, late 12th century, early 13th century, kings of France were sending people to the crusade, um, sometimes wearing helms that look like this mm -hmm. one here. In French, un homme, which is the uh, home of Guillaume, mm -hmm. Guillaume uh, Wilhelm in German. Um, so the x-ray you saw is what we saw when looking just under the newspaper. But then when we change a bit the setting of the CT scan, looking inside the head, we saw this image appear. So that's the actual, uh, actual X-ray. Uh, so all this happened, as you can see, on December 22, 2007, uh, about 12 years ago. I have to say that I was a little scared when I saw that image. Uh, um, I thought, oh, is this the story of a Jew, myself, who carries Buddha to the hospital and a cross appears. Now, there's an explanation for this image. There's a, uh, there's a metal armature inside the head. The, the replica is made in cement. Uh, is hollow inside, and so maybe later, if we have time, I'll show you on the video. You'll you, you'll see uh, you'll see where it comes from. 
Now, 2007, that time was uh, when I was uh, leaving the corporate world, and I had decided to uh, I had decided to set up set up a consulting firm called China. China standing for treasure your natural abilities. And because I've been so uh, uh, concerned by uh, seeing across a friend called Simon suggested, uh, well, you could see the letter T and uh, use it for your logo, which you saw on the name card earlier. The, the mission of Taina was to inspire and guide reinvention. Uh, as I was, was living the corporate world, I wanted to share my personal experience of having had two careers, first one in banking, the second in advertising, and how particular, in particular I had realized I was in the wrong industry, how I discovered my calling, and how I implemented the, the change. About two months later, uh, I, I uh, described uh, my intention with Taina with a, a Russian friend, Olga, who told me that in Russian, Taina means the secret secret. That's why the, so which felt like another extraordinary moment um, because I wanted this company to help people discover what's unique in, in them um, and um, without any knowledge of Russian, I should uh, understand that it means the, the secret secret. So we have this sequence of events like deciding to not open the gift, taking it to the hospital, uh, seeing this uh, uh, image appear, using it as tea for Taina, and then being told that uh, uh, Taina means a secret secret. So in the exhibition, what you see uh, on the walls are, are works that are derived uh, directly from the, from the scans in 2007. They're all unique. Uh, what I did, because uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't even know how to use uh, Photoshop or anything, I downloaded uh, medical imaging software, uh, two of them actually, one is called Horos and the other is called Osirix, and I, I had this CD-ROMs from the 2000, 2007 scans, and just by uh, uh, playing a bit and researching many of the options on the software, I got these images to appear. Because you know, an X-ray is not just a black and white image. These days, with the CT scan, there's a lot of uh, information, and um, well, that's the result of it. So the works you see on these walls are printed on uh, glossy white aluminium. Um, with uh, black acrylic uh, backing. While on the uh, other wall you have slightly larger works uh, printed on the cotton paper uh, and framed with the uh, Grusian glass. All, all these works are unique. There's just uh, one artist uh, proof. But more than that, it was a process of collaboration, not just with the medical side, but also in terms of sound and smell. Yes, so I decided that uh, I wanted to bring uh, the exhibition to life without actually understanding clearly that I wanted to bring Jaya Raman 7 back to life. And for this I thought we needed not just these works, but uh, music and scent. So for the music, I, uh, uh, I went to search for music on YouTube and I found this song which is called uh, Le Secret Sacré, it's the same title uh, as my exhibition. And I will just put the music uh, uh, a little uh, The singer is called Bobby Reed, and he had just put on YouTube uh, a song with the same title as my exhibition. I managed to uh, find him 
when he was uh, performing concerts in Mexico, he gave me the song. And when I met him uh, during Chinese New Year uh, in Toulouse, uh, he uh, agreed that uh, this is a cosmic collaboration, that uh, it was a song he subconsciously had created for the exhibition. He also suggests that the reason why it took 12 years for the exhibition to happen is we had to wait for him to uh, grow up and create the song. Thank you, David. So uh, I wish uh, everybody could, uh, could smell also. So maybe uh, Hervé, uh, first let me introduce you to uh, Hervé Fontaine, who, uh, and yes. our brother, who is, uh, works with Jimodon uh, here in, uh, in, in Singapore. And Hervé, uh, so I approached you uh, with the idea of a perfume. What yeah. do you think? And uh, when we, we, when I saw, I mean, when you talk about your concept, and you talk about revealing without showing, it's exactly what a perfume is doing. If you think about it, the perfume can reveal your personality, can be before you. We know that sometimes the perfume is preceding a woman coming into the, the space, in the room, and then you can figure how she would be. Um, the perfume is also your signature. It's bringing back memories, and you know, I felt that this was this whole revelation without opening, this whole magic around it was really fitting this the purpose of having a perfume for this exhibition and by leveraging the mystery you're trying to reveal without opening. That's what we do as perfumer perfumers every day, and. I will introduce you to Carrie Zatanwa, who is one of our perfumers in Singapore. And Carrie is always saying, perfume is about the magic of the sense. And maybe you can talk about the magic that you felt, what you felt when you were approached, and what was your whole idea. <laughs> <laughs> so first I want to, uh, to say thank you, because it was a real pleasure to, uh, to be part of your exhibition and to collaborate with you to find uh, what is the olfactive signature, signature of uh, all this uh, story. Uh, first, I was very uh, touched by all the story with uh, uh, the king. And uh, for me, you, uh, you make it, uh, his life, his story as a timeless, timeless story. And uh, I feel very beautiful, like it's always a new day, a new, always a rebirth. And uh, you talk about your own experience just a few minutes ago, and like it's a new start, a new beginning. And for me, it evokes uh, the sunrise, and it's warm. You are happy. It's a new day, and I wanted to recreate this feeling in the fragrance. So, and on top of that, I was really touched by uh, this uh, picture, which is a blue with a head uh, in uh, gold, yellow, warm. And it's, for me, it's a visual very addictive. So I wanted as well to have this feeling in the fragrance. So for all this uh, feeling, <laughs> I worked with uh, Jasmine and Osmantius and, and I tried to recreate a flower for me and to have as well this uh, addiction in the fragrance and the warm feeling. And, uh,
the timeliness that I was uh, speaking as in the news, and I believe mm -hmm. it evokes that to you. <laughs> it's my okay. Karin, you created uh, magic. It's, it's beautiful um, beyond words. I wish uh, people who follow us on Facebook Live could experience it. So if you're in Singapore, you can ask, you can come to the gallery to pick up uh, the perfume. Uh, it's called uh, it's called Ren Essence. So Ren is based on a Chinese character that means uh, human or man, and it's actually created using the the Y of uh, Taina. Now I call it an imperial reincarnation elixir. Wow, we love that. <laughs> yes, because that's how magic it is. <laughs> you know, actually. Uh, during the first few days of the exhibition, visitors, so the exhibition opened on January 10. Um, okay, Chiquili, one of the reasons that she chose January 10, okay, it had to do with the, the, the calendar during uh, Singapore Art Week, but it's St. Guillaume's Day, the Catholic calendar. Uh, but when people started to make a few comments about January 7, uh, a few things happened, and I thought, yes, he's back to life. And you know, when we were exploring the different uh, possibilities for the perfume together, for one of the versions, I thought we had the Bayon, this beautiful mm -hmm. temple uh, near Siem Reap that was built by uh, or commissioned by uh, Jai Ahmed Seven, and I think he's back. And there's a big uh, party, uh, and uh, this is uh, what you'd, uh, what you'd, you'd experience uh, there. Now, Savita, you, can you mention the uh, Jai Ahmed Seven Hospital? Yeah in uh, Siem Reap. So it, 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 it belongs to, uh, it's operated by a Swiss foundation. This was the man running the foundation who passed away sadly uh, uh, about a year ago. Uh, so it has the effigy of the king who is really beloved by uh, uh, people in, uh, in Cambodia. So it's a children's hospital where children are treated for free. Uh, and we, with the exhibition we're raising funds for uh, the radiology, uh, the radi radiology department. Um, but you visited Cambodia and you spoke to the people who make the replicas of the heads and they Yes. Are... Well, you know, so in December, I went to Siem Reap as I was, uh, you know, finishing the preparation for the exhibition. At first I went to the museum shop and um, I did a few things. One, I bought a smaller size of the replica to see they still wrap it with newspaper. Okay, it was transparent scotch tape this time. And I showed the video, the scan, the rotating scan. Uh, well, I'll put, I'll put on the, there's also a video for the exhibition. The, 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 the video was uh, created uh, uh, by, uh, with a Rob, Romy Engel, who is a... Uh, So in the video, you uh, hear first and see the various uh, actors of the story, the friend who uh, gave me the head, uh, the radiologist, the friend who said, well, perhaps it could be the letter T and not a cross, the Russian friend who said, uh, Taina means the sacred secret. So, when I showed the rotating scan to the women at the uh, souvenir shop, they were uh, mesmerized. And uh, I then asked them, do you know who made those replicas? I was expecting them to say, we have no idea, I bought pilot from, you know, perhaps China, or, you know. And not at all, they said, yes, of course we know. And she pointed to a little hut uh, in the museum compound where I met the artisans who uh, So it used to be the plaster uh, workshop of the museum. And in the 1950s, they changed to the cement mold. But it's still a very. Uh, oh, so here you understand where the cross comes from. It's, uh, um, it's a metal armature that holds the, the, the head together. And of course the song says, the secret secret is a sweet secret that everybody uh, owns. Le secret sacré est un secret sucré. So, you know, sweet is sucré, it sounds like sucré and sacré as well. Yeah, 
And so watching the reaction of uh, those artisans was quite, uh, quite special. So if you like to see the, uh, the video, it's uh, three minutes and a half. It's on Vimeo, it's password protected. It is sold for uh, 100 Singapore dollar. And if you buy it, you'll uh, get, uh, thanks to uh, Givaudan, uh, to Hervé, to Carrie, to my colleagues, you will get a 30 millimeter bottle of Rain Essence, this Imperial Reconditioning Elixir. And $50 or $100 goes to the Jaya Ramat 7 uh, Hospital. And you can imagine uh, it will be uh, welcome, uh, it will be welcome there. So is there anything you'd like to... No, I think for me what was really uh, the bud of this exhibition was the fact that you have such a deep belief in dates, in coincidences, in the way that you bring people together. There seems to, everything just seems to come together and I think a lot of that is to do with your own belief in the goodness. So. Um, that's basically your secret, your sacred secret. Thank, thank you, Savita. Indeed, the, uh, my, my, this exhibition uh, is part of my conceptual practice, which has a statement of documenting divine providence. Uh, for more about that, uh, just uh, Google me, watch evidence, watch my, watch my TEDx. So I think this completes uh, the short, uh, actually quite long visit <laughs> of uh, the Secret Sacré. And thank you uh, to the people who are following us on Facebook Live or watching uh, later. Thank you very much, uh, Kimberly, for uh, being with us, Savita, uh, Karine, Hervé. And then I will show you, it's not really a secret, it's not really sacred, but it's very special because the gallery continues behind the kitchen, so you've seen uh, Room one, and I hope you come back, watch again the video of the visit of uh, the Earth and her skin, the solo exhibition by Priyagita Dia, which is uh, open in the gallery until May 3. Um, my exhibition closes on uh, March 29. So the gallery continues with a kind of secret door uh, that, uh, that leads to, uh, to another street. Well, by now, night has fallen uh, in Singapore, uh, so you might see uh, a little bit of this mural painting by Alex Face. He's a Thai street artist. Um, yeah, Alex Face here. This was Akat Prada. And uh, with this, since now it's nightfall here in Singapore, uh, to wish everybody uh, Shabbat Shalom, a happy weekend, and I want to wish uh, one and all the best possible uh, health, take care, uh, stay home in the countries where you're supposed to stay home. Um, it's very important, you can do lots of things from your home, like uh, uh, watching Facebook Lives. Merci beaucoup.